Hello and welcome to another episode of Not Without My Sister, where I, Rosemary McCabe, am joined by my sister, Beatrice McCabe. And we are fresh off, well, I was going to say fresh off the plane. We're not, we're fresh out of the car from a weekend away in, in Michigan, in St. Joseph, Michigan. And we thought we would talk about holiday calamities. Not that we had any massive ones, actually, this time. I mean, Chance was sick. The baby kicked me in the stomach approximately 10 times. That could have been calamitous. Oh my God, the baby, sorry. Okay, the baby fox, who is three. And I have to say, I'm, we're going to have to stop calling him the baby because we're going to have a new baby. He's not the baby. He's the toddler. You're going to have a new baby. Yes. and my, He will I'm, always be my baby. No, and my baby will be the baby. Da baby. No, I had this conversation with Kevin. And Kevin said, you need to stop calling him the baby. And I said, he will always be my baby. And Kevin said, you're right. I'm the baby of the family. <laughs> well, yeah, but you can call him my baby. But he's not the yeah. baby. He's not going to be the baby anymore. My baby's going to be the, the baby. He's the baby to me. Your baby's your baby. He, my baby's the baby. Well, then what, how, how, how come your baby has been the baby to all of us for so long? I want my baby to be the baby for all of us. I mean, listen, that's not the point. Maybe you shouldn't have called him the baby. You should have just called him your baby. It's my, your fault. Anyway, yesterday, listen, the baby loves you. Yesterday, he too looked at a picture of you and he said, me love him. <laughs> me love him, Mo Fifi. We, we, need to, we need to drum this, this him and her thing into his head. Although maybe he's just f- f- far ahead of all of us. Why, they're, yes, exactly. Why do we? They're grand. Well, I would just prefer if you called everyone her. I just, they're, they, they're grand, I they, said. They, them. Oh yeah, good point. The baby, Fox, who I'm obviously continuing to call the baby, who's three. What was it like? I think we were, I was giving him a shower. No, no, I wasn't giving him a shower. I, I, I was having a shower. And he came in to basically go, Mo Fifi? Like, what, what are you doing? I have a phone? Basically, he going like, give me a phone. <laughs> and the two of us walked out of the bathroom and he tripped over the kind of lintel oh. between the bathroom tile and the bedroom carpet. And he slid directly over and landed like whacked his head off the side of the bed which was in a big wooden kind of would you call it a box frame like a big yeah, boxed off so. bed base and oh my god like okay so like spoiler alert it didn't end badly because he cried for a couple of minutes then I gave him a phone he was fine right he like he definitely hurt himself but as I saw it happening I was literally like oh my god he's going to have like a fracture or he's going to have hurt his neck really badly like it just looked it was one of those things you know like when you sometimes see kids fall and you're like oh my god that looks terrible and then they get up and they start laughing and you're like how did they just bounce up from that he didn't quite bounce up like he screeched but it was just like oh my god and like one of those things that kind of just made me think of the last time we went to Michigan with all the kids and do you remember he was really sick and like vomiting all night one of the nights oh god yeah well I mean do you remember he had, well he was vomiting like non-stop for three years basically oh, yeah. which was Two years, which is kind of his problem. But um, meanwhile, as they say, back at the back at the ranch, that's the expression, isn't it? Back at the ranch, because Don was here by himself having a much needed bit of R&R. Although when I came back, he didn't look R&R at all because it, uh, we, we had forgotten. He and I always forget our wedding anniversaries. And I had rem- what I had not remembered it. You had reminded me of it in the car on the way down. You're like, isn't today your wedding anniversary? I was like, oh my God. So I sneakily went on target.com and sent him a load of gifts, pretended to remember it. Cause every year this is our, this is our like kind your of power play. Each this other. is your power struggle. Yeah, who remembers, yeah. who remembers and who forgets. So anyway, so I sent like a pair of slippers and a pair of PJ pants and a cushion that said, you matter. It was the only thing I could find on target and, and some snacks chocolate and, stuff, right? and what else? Yeah. Some snacks. Yeah. And then I was, and then like, I mean, then there was two hours of just total giddy Oh my God, you were in a frenzy waiting for these things to arrive. I mean, I was so delighted. And then he was in an absolute bummed out phase of like total, also total um, delusion where he was like, if we were together, we'd be doing something. I'm like, no, we wouldn't. If we were together, we'd be doing exactly what we're doing apart. But anyway, he then went outside and I think in an attempt to distract himself from the fact that he was now missing out on what should have been a super romantic anniversary weekend, went out and mowed the grass. And halfway around the garden, got ambushed by a load of yellow jacket wasps and got about 18 stings on his arm. So, oh. so that was a bit calamitous, that was his but we weren't there. 
That was his staycation calamity, yeah. Oh, poor Don. But, you know, I was thinking, though, seriously, if we've already talked about some of these, but, like, we don't really go, you know, our, it's more the domestic holidays where we seem to have, like, it's more the family holidays. Like, the more, you know, beach holidays seem to be pretty safe, except for, for you and the broken arm. But, like, well, I didn't break my the arm burn, the Yeah, the burn where I slid down a rock and, like, oh, nearly yeah. smashed my nose into. Um, obviously, the baby bashing his face off the bed. Um, there was another one. Oh, when we were down and we used to go down to the um, to Carriga Holt and down to Kerry. Do you remember and and, to, and rent um, what are they called? I don't know. We used to stay in a mobile home. Oh yeah, did we? Yeah, and yeah, we used to stay in a mobile. We used to stay in mom and dad's friend's mobile home, and and we went down there with our French with our French uh, exchange oh, student, like yeah, one of yeah. mom's friends. And he slipped on a rock and twisted his ankle and then spent, had to get crutches and then spent the rest of the week, like this was probably day one, spent the rest of the week sitting in the mobile home with his leg, like sitting on one side with his leg resting on the cushion on the other side. So literally there was no room whatsoever in the mobile home for anybody else. <laughs> there were about 14 of us. I'm like, <laughs> it was an, and it lashed nonstop from day one to day seven. Well, I mean, you'll have that. Yeah absolute disaster but then also I feel like dad's constantly hurting himself on holiday as well well we went to do you remember we went to Ackle uh, for a week or two weeks and we decided we signed up to that outdoor you know that like outdoor uh, surf school that they have in Ackle it's really famous so I shouldn't have it was just very I did we sign I don't think we only did a one day lesson but didn't dad do like wasn't that very adventurous of our parents I wouldn't necessarily put them down as like surfers I feel like that was good that was real like I'm doing this for my kids Yeah I mean I think it was windsurfing because it was on a it was like in was an inlet yeah. or something wasn't it so it wasn't like out in the waves But basically dad we were we were we were at the very I don't think I was doing anything I think it was just you and dad because mom definitely didn't do it I think I was too young And was you and dad and dad, we were at the phase where they were like, OK, let's practice standing up on the board, basically, in like the shallowest of shallow waters. I think the water was about two feet deep. So you could literally just step off the board and step on the board. You know what I mean? And whatever happened, dad <laughs> stepped off the board funny and did something <laughs> to his knee where that actually turned into like a very long term, complicated injury. He still where, has it. Hmm? He still has it. He still suffers from it. Well, he had to have an operation on it. So something about the cartilage like detached from the kneecap or something. And basically then for the rest of the holiday, it kept popping out of place. And he, (laughs) in order to pop it back into place, he'd have to just kneel down really suddenly. (laughs) Do you remember on the way back, we were driving home for lunch and we stopped off in, I don't know, Castle Bar or something. No, we didn't stop off in Castle Bar. It's not the right, it's not the right geographic direction, but we stopped off in some small town. Anyway, and we went across, so we parked the car and then we were crossing the road to go into some like place for lunch. And halfway through, we looked back and there's all the traffic going up and down the town and dad on his knee in yeah, the middle of yeah. the road. And, and he just looked like he was like genuflecting, you know what I mean? He just would like all of a sudden go down into a half curtsy. And I think actually in that, <laughs> that, that same afternoon when we when we went for lunch, he went up to the counter to pay and then all of a sudden obviously his knee popped out so he dropped down to his knee and I think your one behind the counter thought he'd had a heart attack. It was literally like, oh my God. Or he was proposing. Or he was proposing. Well, like, this is the same man though. Like, I, don't, I, I sometimes find it hard to reconcile this guy who has, who's like constantly genuflecting and proposing on a random basis with the same person who like falls out of the car, trips, goes into like a full tumble, like G.I. Joe style and jumps up like... He's very courageous all the same, given, you know, the traumatised appendages. <laughs> what? What? Traumatised appendages? Rosemary, isn't that a leg? I'm googling this right now. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it does include a leg, but... It's like things that hang off you. <laughs> Beatrice, <laughs> your leg doesn't <laughs> hang off you. It's You're being... A weirdo. You're being a weirdo. Since when have you thought that person's legs hang off them? Maybe this is because I just listened to a podcast about Verena Bobbitt. Did you? Yeah. Oh my God. Nash asked us the other day, who is the, who is Lorena Bobbitt? And I said, well, she's, I was trying to tell a story. She's a woman who had, was in an abusive relationship oh, with her husband. And Don goes, yeah, she cut off his penis. Nash looked like he was literally about to fall over and just pass out. Well, you better check his his Google history because I then Googled it and you can find a picture of that penis in page one. 
cut off. Can, like. Isn't that penis on lots of porn movies? Oh, yeah, yeah. But that's when it got put back on. But you can see a picture of it like in the grass. Because she threw it out the car window. <laughs> I, did, I didn't need that gesture from you there. But why would you want to see it? Like, uh, you're bitch, surrounded by them. You're so like, weird. Are we, what? Course, you're so weird. Of course I'd want to see it. Well, I was more horrified by how actually here's here's a here's a calamity. Here's a here was a horror moment for me on the holiday that maybe you didn't really notice. And we were sitting at the dining room table and we just I think we just finished our dinner and we were chatting. And then when I stood up to go and put on the kettle and turned around and you were secretly watching blackhead popping videos full screen on your computer. That wasn't what we were eating in, in my defense. Well, it was regardless. I never wanted to eat again. It was disgusting. I'm, I'm sure you've you managed ruined, though, to get over that. You have traumatized you? my... Yeah, you traumatized me on the weekend. <laughs> you, you know what happened to me um, a couple of times? Well, so I wasn't actually on the holiday, but there were a few times that mom and dad were away. Or mo- like mom was away the weekend that I broke my arm. That's the, do you remember when dad sent me in for the for the takeaway menu? <laughs> mom was away that weekend. I can't remember where she was. I think she might have been in the Gwaeltuk when she was doing her teaching course. She was, that is where she was, yeah. And then there was another time that mom and dad were both away. And I was, I think, 19. I was in the house on my own and I got the mumps. And I had to get the doctor up to the house because I was so sick. Yeah. Plus, I mean, 19 year olds could be married, you know, you know, like you don't need your mom and dad when you're 19 with the mumps. You yeah. just get on with things. No, I know. But say. I just mean like it was kind of a coincidental <laughs> calamity for them. You know what I mean? Because they were. It wasn't a calamity for them. It was great for them. They weren't there while you were, were sick. I think Trust they me, came home early. They were horrified. I just don't know where they were actually. Oh, they love you. 19 and you needed your mom and dad. I can't even get over oh, this. Beautiful. I was very sick. The mumps it was awful. And I was. I was very seriously dating my ex-boyfriend at the time. But then obviously he couldn't be around me because the mumps are really dangerous for men because if they get them, they can, it can render them infertile. That's true. True facts okay. with is Dr. That, Rosemary. That, that's a very sad part of the story, all right, yeah. I mean, he was she fine. He was grand. You were grand not seeing each other for 10 minutes. But there was nobody there to look after me, Beatrice. You know how I feel about these things. Where was I? You'd fucked off to Milan or Paris. <laughs> you were you were long gone. You'd left us all in the... In the wind. Well, those were the days. Oh my God, there was another calamity that actually I'm slightly sorry I'm going to bring up now. But when when myself and Kira were on were on holidays in, um, I think we were in in Marbella, and our bag got stolen the day before we were due to fly home with our with our credit cards in it. It was it was your bag. You, you okay? I know it was my yeah. bag, my Chloe bag. You yeah, had lent us a beautiful Chloe bag. Mm-hmm. You'd lent me a beautiful Chloe bag that then I mm-hmm. slung across the back of my chair, got robbed. Mm-hmm. With mm-hmm. with our bank cards in it. You're, you're, I'm a very forgiving type, I've realised. I don't think I've even ever mentioned that again since that happened. Now, that's true. That reminds me of... But the, but sorry, but sorry the, keys, the keys to our apartment were in it as well. So we had to then try and contact like the spare key holder and then I had to get a friend to transfer money to my like other bank account because I had that, that card back in the room. It was, the whole thing was just... And this was literally at like 10pm the night before we were due to fly home. Do you know, I think that that reminds me of... I'm just thinking as well, you should never give your guests when they come to visit you abroad. If you live abroad, never have a little bowl of nuts ready to get, to greet somebody with. Like a glass of wine, a bowl of nuts, some snacks. No, twice now I've had a bowl of nuts ready for a, for a, an arriving guest. And dad, it was dad the first time. Dad took a bite out of the... Oh no, it was, Ju- it was Anna. Julie's sister was the first one when she came over to visit us on Val de Pompier. I think I've mentioned this before, which was like the night of the fire. The firemen had their big firemen's you know, get together. Fireman's ball, yeah, in Paris. And she arrived over and we had like, we were in, in the house having a pair of teeth, drinks and nuts and stuff. And she took a bite of a nut and the cap fell off her tooth. <laughs> I was so unfortunate. And of course, like, I mean, luckily it was dark, right? We were going out and nobody noticed. And then dad came over to put to New York. He came over for a month when Nash was a baby by himself, which was so nice. That was the time that he skidded across the floor on his toenails like Michael Jackson. <laughs> he did a moonwalk, he stood up did, did, on the glossy wooden floor to help to like the baby was running around. The baby at the time being Nash. And he jumped up to give a hand and like <laughs> literally just slid three feet on his, t- on his toenails across the floor. <laughs> Dad will not like the story. We were all, I mean, he was actually very impressed with his own, I don't even know, like <laughs> athleticism. <laughs> yeah, it was so bizarre. It was like he was levitating. <laughs> Wasn't that the time he came over to help you do renovations on the house and then I think like two days before he was due to go home like screwed a screw in a door? 
uh, yes. <laughs> and Don said, Don was laughing afterwards because he was like, this is what happens. He goes, your dad, every day, he goes, I mind, he goes, I mind Nash and your dad might make lunch or like he helps, he helps around the house. He goes, but ba- basically, you know, the two of us have a pretty chill day. Baby's the baby. Um, he goes like, I'm minding, I'm minding Nash and dad is basically sitting in the lazy boy reading Every now and then, you know, he'll make a snack or he'll play with the baby for half an hour or whatever. He goes, and then at approximately 5.30, his alarm will go off and he'll go, well, we're just going to be home now in an hour and a half. What should we do? <laughs> what should we get done for her? <laughs> I thought you were going to say his alarm goes off and he opens a bottle of wine. Oh, no, that too, that too. I mean, oh, we had a great time actually when he was, it's very, very sad. There's lovely pictures of him there with Nash on Nash's first birthday was yeah, it, his first, so, it must have been yeah. his first birthday it was so it was so nice to have it was so nice to have that time together anyway when he arrived though same thing he bit into a nut and half his tooth fell off <laughs> luckily not his front tooth one of his back teeth just fell off and then it went missing right so our don's friend travis was at the table as well and for weeks dad was convinced travis had stolen <laughs> his tooth <laughs> Did you ever find it? <laughs> uh, no, it never turned up. So, like, even though Dad's like, I know, I know, Travis didn't take it. He's a bit like, there's, there's a bit of a, like a, a raised eyebrow. <laughs> yeah, he's like, did he? Yeah, and Travis was obsessed with Dad. <laughs> he was always like, when's your Dad coming back? He's hilarious. He's this. He's that. He's the other. Dad was literally like, Travis took my tooth. <laughs> maybe, m- maybe Travis took it so that he could clone him, like like Barbara Streisand and her dogs. Well, to be quite honest, if you'd seen the tooth, like you'd be throwing it straight in the bin, right? It was a bit like those toenails that shouldn't be there to allow the moonwalking to happen. But it was actually hilarious. Anyway, great, great memories of that time. But that's a top tip, you know, soft foods only for new guests. <laughs> <laughs> I used to like having um, sugared cashews. You'd never break a tooth on a sugared cashew. Cashews are quite soft. Like but the sugary part could be hard. No, like a nice honey roast cashew. They're nice. Yeah, okay. So on on the stolen tack, I went down. I I had this very small fleeting romance with this guy that I was obsessed with when I lived in Milan. And he lived in Rome. And I, I feel was like, like your entire time in Milan was taken up with you being obsessed with different men. Well, this was a very um, weird kind of meeting. So I was in the market one morning. I was at at the vintage market and I saw this guy, I don't know, 100 feet away from me and I looked at him and he looked at me as they say and like we definitely, a frisson passed between us and I was like, oh my God, he was so handsome, right? Thought no more of it then wandered around the market, spent the day buying random secondhand clothes, went back to my cousin's office that afternoon, went in, was going down the stairs to say hi and there, so they say, was this total worst looking guy. Yeah. And he had just been telling them about some girl that he had seen at the market and this weird moment oh that passed God, between them. Oh my God, should be married. That transpired. This, this I, I know, I know. Well, I was convinced, of course, of course, this was my soulmate, right? I mean, of course, like where else would this happen? Wasn't my soulmate, listeners, was not my soulmate. But we did go out on a couple of dates and had a very exciting romance. And then he went back to Rome, which is where he lived because he was only visiting. He was, he was actually friends with my cousin and their friends group and uh, he invited me down to Rome to visit him and that was very exciting however in the interim I had gone from having long lustrous curly hair and wearing slightly feminine clothes to getting my uh, lip pierced and having my hair shaved into a mohawk and we're starting to wear my strappy cargo trousers now this as you say parachute beauty pants. is not yeah parachute pants beauty is on the inside listeners and you know, we shouldn't be judging a book by its cover, etc. But anyway, when I got down to Rome on the train, well, he was not impressed with well, this book's was, new cover. Well, the problem was he'd already judged the book by the cover and then the book mm. suddenly morphed into, like, the book Dune. Put on it. The, book took off, the book took off its flyleaf. The book started called? off as, as Mills and Boone and then ended up as, like, G.I. <clears throat> <G>. Jane. <laughs> it's not... I like Demi Moore. She was very attractive in that movie. It's not the flyleaf. What's it called? The dust cover. The... Yeah, that actually goes that actually goes well with your dune analogy. The dust jacket. The dust jacket. Dust cover, you can say it. It's not a dust cover, it's a dust jacket. Fine. Anyway, on the train on the way down, as if to add insult to injury, I had I had I had a sleeping booth and I was sleeping on the top bunk and I had my most valuables under my pillow and my other valuables, i.e. all my other clothes that were not parachute pants, in a bag at the foot of my of my bed. When I woke up the next morning, all my clothes were gone. 
And I only had these cargo pants to wear for the whole four days in his house. When I got there, I also didn't realize that I was going to be staying in his apartment with his sister and his parents and him. And it was very, very, very odd. Right. And he was quite clear from the get go that this was not what he was expecting and basically spent the first first day in Ikea with his sister and didn't invite me. It was all just very, very weird. Maybe he was hoping you'd go shopping. Disappointing. Yeah. And get a wig. Maybe. But anyway, it was just all very odd. But I mean, so that was the end of that. We didn't really have a great love affair after that. So I didn't marry him. But like you were there for four days. Mm-hmm. And were you basically just like, was he basically just keeping you on the, like, at a distance for the four days? Like, were you just mates then? Yeah. and I, Yeah. At one point I had to go and have a conversation and be like, listen, can we cop on here? Like, I get that this is not a mad romance. Could you actually talk to me and can we go out and have like, fun, have lunch and yeah. yeah, have a wander around? So very begrudgingly he did. I mean, I think it was a weight off his shoulders that like somebody said it because he certainly wasn't going to. Anyway, so stupid. I mean, of course, can you imagine? Fair play to me saying that without like crying, you know, tears of anguish I was so devo because I was absolutely infatuated with them and despite this crap treatment I was still infatuated with them oh listen Beatrice of course I know they can they can treat you as badly as as they want like infatuation doesn't just we don't have any standards or (laughs) self-respect infatuation (laughs) remains um I wonder how you would have felt if the other way around like if he had gone from being like your idea of very physically attractive to then like wearing deck shoes and like uh, chinos I'd I'd probably I'd probably be married to him (laughs) (laughs) right I don't know what you mean by this (laughs) God speaking of deck shoes Brandon bought two pairs of deck shoes the other day Rosemary Brandon has Crocs you're done I have Crocs you have Crocs Americans love yeah I do I do but they're not like Brandon wears them extremely earnestly we wear ironic multicoloured crocs with gibbets Brandon wears extremely ironic old man gardening crocs boat, uh, boat shoes are cool I bought him some gibbets for his crocs actually and he's conveniently lost one already the aubergine <laughs> <laughs> are you joking no <laughs> that's good he came back and he was like I lost my eggplant <laughs> oh my god of course he did God, did you record him saying that? No, but I should have. Just like John Wayne Bobbitt. So what about, well, there was also, who was I talking about this with the other day? I think it was Nash. Well, we went to the beach last, as as you know, you were there. We went to the beach. Oh, that was a bit of a calamity, actually. That was a bit of a calamity because the weather was, uh, we had a beach hazard warning, so we couldn't swim, which then meant that all we could do was sit on the side of the of the beach and horsing ourselves, screaming at the children not to go out beyond their knees, yeah. right? For in effect, six really. hours. But it reminded me of the story of mom, mom's, but one of mom's best friends who has, who is unfortunately now no longer with us, but who had terrible, terrible, a terrible eyesight, Anna, right? Right. And she had, she used to wear these glasses that were like bottle tops. Oh, they were, were in yeah, Spain yeah, yeah. Or Greece, they were in Spain or Greece one time and they, she was swimming out. She's, and she was a good swimmer, but like not, you know, not like Olympian standard and she is swimming out to sea and she had left her glasses on the beach and halfway through her swim she got disoriented and so she was turning around in the water going which way is back to shore and she espied on the horizon what she assumed was her beach and the island she and her husband were staying on and she began to swim towards it and an hour later had to be rescued by the sea rescue swimming entirely in the wrong direction oh my god I don't remember that story (laughs) poor her that just goes to show why you should always swim lengthways along the shore Maybe she was swimming lengthways, but, you know, that just goes to show you, it's always, you can't be too careful in the sea. You can't. But actually, when we were at Lake Michigan and they had this warning, so there was, you know, the warning was for, what, like high waves and currents and stuff. And I was thinking about, like, I'm pretty sure those are the conditions we used to be basically forced into the sea in, in Wexford and in Balance Gaelic. So it'd be like, get in there, you're grand. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I was wondering? Like, and I mean, people can answer this. Like, how did we manage to sit on the beach for the full day with no sun? We loved it. Yeah. I mean, I think because we were probably quite like, well, yeah, we were probably quite active as in, you know what I mean? If you're, if you're running around, <laughs> no, but I mean, if you're running around building sandcastles we and you're weren't. like back and forth and stuff. But we also have a lot of photos of us being just like wrapped in towels, like absolute, like, That's true. like, you know what I mean? Swaddled in blankets. Ewoks. Ewoks on the beach. <laughs> okay. So what other, what other holiday calamities did you have? I took up smoking on holiday in France. That was that was a calamity. That was that was the start of my descent into being a full time smoker was when 
I was in Le Grand Maitre campsite in, don't know where it was, and uh, the French and Germans were all smoking red Marlboros, and I was very into these particular, I was very into every man basically there. <laughs> And I was like, he's smoking and he's drinking these tiny little beers and I'm going to smoke and drink these tiny little beers. And that was the beginning of the end for me. That was when I was like, I think 16 or 17. And then I smoked until I was like on and off. Well, mostly on. And then with like two years off here and then finally gave up about two years ago. But until I was what, like 34, 33. Did you? I always felt like it was a temporary thing. It wasn't. You were smoking for 15 years. Yeah, I mean... When I was younger, I think I would more like I would smoke on nights out. And then I think I started smoking full, like a full time smoking when I was about 24. And then I would smoke like between kind of 15 and 20 a day, sometimes up to 30, mostly 20, like mostly a packet a day um, until I was about. Yeah, until I was. Well, I gave up for I gave up after I, after I met Stephen. So I gave up for like three years while we were dating. And then basically the day we broke up, I was like, fuck this and ran off to spar <laughs> got myself like 16 croissants and two packets of cigarettes and sat in the back garden crying and smoking for the day oh maybe that explains the wheeze that you think you have probably although you know what I, actually after I gave up it was a, like a year and a half after I gave up smoking I went and I had that executive health check thing that I was talking about a couple of episodes ago where I had like a full you know MOT kind of thing and one of the things was they checked my lung capacity and they said that my lung capacity is actually higher than the average for my age and that they sometimes find that with people who have smoked and given up because they've basically put their lungs under so much pressure that their lungs have hmm. to work slightly harder. You know what I mean? Well, that's good news. Well, ish, but they could all be like filled with tar as well. Hopefully not. Well, that's a bleak way to look at it. All right. <laughs> so... um in general, I'd say if you're having a domestic, what are your words of wisdom? I would say if you're having a domestic holiday, be careful. Stay away from the rocks. Stay away from the rocks. Stay away from the peanuts. Oh, God. Stay away from the peanuts. Yeah. Trim your toenails. Yeah, or any other hard snacks. <laughs> <laughs> Do not oh. ever. You know what? Now, I mean, now you wouldn't ever have to, right? Because you have the internet. Do not ever go anywhere to get a takeaway menu. Do you know what I mean? That was... You know, that ruined my whole summer. So, honestly, I don't think there's been a holiday that we've gone on that the kids haven't got sick. And then there was the time that Bo went into like massive, just we were driving on down to when we lived in, in Dallas, we were driving down to hill country in Dallas down near Austin. And Nash goes like and Nash must have been four. And he's like, mom, mom. And we turn around and Bo is literally sitting in his high in his chair, strapped in pink from head to toe with Hives, massive hives all over a hundred percent of his body. Oh my god! Just sitting there, I don't remember this. Yeah, yeah. And we pulled and we went into the immediate, like we drove at high speed to the walk-in clinic, and they gave him um, what's it called? Like they gave him a like an epipen. A, no, they well, yes, they gave him like the equivalent of that, you know, for a for a baby. Yeah. And then we had to go. We checked into our hotel. He didn't get much better, so then we unchecked and went home, and they were all very nice. But like, I'd say. Just, you know, think twice about where you're going with your kids because like... And what was go it? close to a walk-in clinic. We never found out. Oh, sorry. I got bitten by a cat in Turkey and had to go and get a tetanus in like the most horrendously rural uh, hospital where nobody spoke English. And it was so impossible to explain to them that I got... I was just petting this cat by... This stray cat by the pool and it bit me. <laughs> oh! This is when you I was an adult. We went and... You also, when we went down to visit mom's friend, got bitten by a dog. You need to stay away I from know, the... Actually, there's terrible. another one. Stay away from seemingly friendly animals. This cat did seem very friendly until it didn't. Like our own cat. Pet, actually, pet, pet, that reminds chomp. me. Yeah, Don went up to pet the horse next to us in Ireland when like he went up to pet the horse and then went into full on like allergic mode. And we had to go and we had to go to the doctor and get like major cortisone, whatever <laughs> shots from. Yeah. God, yeah. yeah. Stay away from anything anything animal like yeah stay away from the animals on holidays uh learn like you know what as well if you're going to a foreign country with it with a different language learn to say some things that you might need to say in hospital rosemary google translate oh i think i think i well i think i didn't have internet at the time it was when i was about it was when it was probably about 10 years ago and i was on a press trip you know what i was on a press trip to turkey and i remember i was there with like six or seven other journalists and i was sunbathing topless by the pool 
front of my peers. <laughs> In hindsight, I'm like, what was I doing? Like, my fellow journalists didn't need to see my nips. Oh, do you know what? On the other hand, they're your nips. It's grand. I bet you the men all had their tops off. You're grand. Well, they did, Beatrice, but my nips were more impressive. Yeah, what? I would say I would say learn to say like. I've been bitten by a cat. <laughs> no, help! I need a tetanus. Uh, I was bitten by a cat. Oh, hold on, sorry. <laughs> In Turkish. <laughs> That wasn't helpful. <laughs> oh, God. Are you ready? Okay, ready. No wonder you couldn't say <laughs> it. <laughs> Play that into the microphone there. Hold it up. <laughs> okay, learn that, Rosby, for the next time you go to Turkey if you get bitten by a cat. How do you say I need a tetanus? That seems easier. Okay, hold on. Tetanus <laughs> ihtiyacım Try it, Rosemary. Tate you some gym mash. Okay, terrible. No, that was they fine. would never be given. Anyway, the ten. whole point is if it happens nowadays, you just play it through your phone. There you go. Bring your phone with you, Google Translate. <laughs> We've solved it. And just fork out on the on the roaming charges. If you need a tetanus, you need a tetanus. Thank you all so much for listening. Please share your own holiday calamities. Uh, but not if they're more calamitous than ours, because we don't like to be outdone. I can't believe you were bitten by a cat. <laughs> Fingers crossed now. We've had our share of holiday <laughs> maladies and that the next time we go on a vacay, oh God, we'll have a small baby. It'll be, it'll be like starting over all, over all over again, the puking nonstop. Well, listen, it's a far cry from sunbathing. T- <clears throat> listen, it's a far cry from sunbathing topless with your peers, with your colleagues now to like a baby puking on your shoulder. I just can't believe that like you came back from that trip and you're like, I don't know why they don't take me seriously. I did not come back from that trip saying I don't know why they, take, they don't take me seriously. I came back from that trip going, everyone takes me very seriously. It was deluded. <laughs> It's absolutely out of my mind. Thank you all so much for listening. Um, in case you didn't know, we now have a Patreon where for $5 a month, it works out at about €4.50. Euro. Uh, you can sign up and get an extra special bonus episode every Friday and you'll also get the regular main feed episode early and without any pesky ads. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. Not Without My Sister is edited by Tall Tales. Sound and original music by Don Kirkland and our original illustration is by Lindsay Nielsen. Not Without My Sister is a member of The Warren. As is our podcast, The Critter Shed. For more great podcasts, hop along to thewarren.ie.